Missionary Baptist Church and to those who are online watching us here, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and our pastor here, Reverend Rodney A. Cross Sr., also greets you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Sunday school lesson this morning is titled, entitled, Expectant Mother's Faith. Devotional reading comes from Philippians 4, verses 10 through 19. And then the background scripture comes from Luke chapter 1, verse 1 through 25. Then it picks up again at 39 through 45. And then it picks up again through 56 through 60. And again, I would encourage you to read the background scripture along with this lesson scripture that will bring more clarity to what is being talked about here, the expectant mother's faith. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this one more day, dear Heavenly Father, to wake up and be able to say thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Lord, bless those who came this morning for Sunday school. Bless those who got up. Dear Heavenly Father, and hopefully they woke up and the first thing they said was, thank you, Lord. Because it's important to know who gives us life, dear Heavenly Father. Just as this lesson will show us, dear Heavenly Father, that Mary is going to be given not only a life, a new life, but she's going to be given a life that will conquer the world and that will save all of us. So let us glean from this and understand what is it talking about when it says expectant mother's faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 36, and I'll read down to 45, and then I'll read verse 56. And it reads as thus. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will never fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words, be, may your words to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, Judea where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of her greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped with joy. Blessed is she who has believed, and the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. And then it skips down to verse 56. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Background, the key scripture is this, Luke 41 and 42a. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her room and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. The scripture teaches us that we should, as Christians, should have joy. Matter of fact, it, is, it's, it, it should be part of your life if you are a Christian. But not only should you have joy, but you should have infectious joy. You should have a joy that understands that if it was not for God, you and I would not even be here. 
what does infectious joy consist of? It can consist of knowing that you, and although you may feel a certain way, that you are special in God's eyes. And that if you are special in his eyes, that's all is required. That man does not necessarily look at you and call you special. Because some people don't want you to be special. So man is never going to look at you and call you special. But God wants you to know that you're so special that you should have joy in your heart every day. And this lesson opens up in the early tradition about here in Luke. And it, it talks about how Luke was a physician. He was a doctor. And then he became a Christian under Jesus Christ. And he is the one who wrote Luke and also Acts. And he helped Paul do some writing in some of the other scriptures. But his key was he wanted the world to know. And there's a man we very seldom hear about, his, about him. He never walked around with the disciples. He never went to different towns with the disciples, but his name was Theolopus. Theolopus. He furnished the money so Luke could write the scriptures. Just like ink in your computer costs so much. Matter of fact, if you want to invest, that's one of the best investments you can make is in ink that goes into your computers. Because we're going to be using them for a long, long time. But Theopolis knew Luke needed paper. And paper in his day was just as expensive as ink is in computers today. And Theopolis furnished the money so he could write the scriptures down on paper. And here we open up in this section here talking about the acceptance of the message. It ought to be an encouragement to all of us when we read these verses that I've just read again. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. Who is talking? The angel who has came to Mary is talking to Mary and telling her, you've got a great assignment. You, you're going to be given, you are the woman who's going to give birth to Jesus, the Savior of the world. And so as he explained to her what was going to take place, he also pointed out the fact, he said, Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. What does that mean? That means that Elizabeth was way past the age of bearing children. In other words, it was not humanly possible for her to bear a child. But oh, but God, he told Mary about Elizabeth so Mary could strengthen herself realizing that if this can happen, to an older person who is beyond able to conceive, then what's getting ready to happen to me? I got to understand if this angel is telling me what's getting ready to happen, I need to have enough faith to believe it. And that's what she done. She had enough faith to believe it. She had enough faith to understand what was getting ready to take place. So that brings us to a couple of questions. Why is hope and faith important to you? Why is faith and hope important to you? Well, I can't answer for you. I can only answer for me. Faith and hope is important to me because I have seen it work in over my lifetime. I accepted Jesus Christ when I was 15. And the scriptures that got me to really understand was he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
And I can guarantee you from in my life, he's been with me up until then. So I have faith that he will not only leave me or forsake me, but he told me, he said, you will not be begging bread. I never had to beg bread from an outsider. The Lord has blessed me with a family who fed me. The Lord has blessed me with a job that will take care of me. So I don't have to ask. It's not that I'm too proud to ask, but he said, I'll bless you. You and I have to have that kind of faith that when he tells you something, he will do it. He will do it. And he told her in verse 38, he says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be in me, be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. She accepted it by faith. May your word be fulfilled in my life. I'm going to accept your word. In other words, she was joyful to understand that, hey, I'm getting ready to have Christ as my child. But let's make no mistake. Not only did she think about the joy in her life, she lived in a culture that when a woman who had a child under wedlock was deemed unpure, they talked about them, they kicked them to the curb, they done everything to discourage them, they recommended that they don't have the child, some parents would even take their children and take them out of town and let them live somewhere else so they wouldn't be embarrassed by a mother who's having a child out of wedlock. And she said, uh-uh, I believe it. May it be fulfilled. In other words, I'm not afraid of what's getting ready to happen to me. I know I'm going to get outcast. I know I'm going to get kicked to the curb by some people. But my belief says I'm doing the right thing because God chose me. Why do I say that? Because he chose each of us. You may not want to believe it, but he chose you. You didn't choose him. You may have walked down the aisle, got baptized, but he chose you. Because if he did not choose you, you never would have went down the aisle and came to him and got baptized. He chose you. He's, he's got something special for you. This is why joy should be a, an expression of a believer in Jesus Christ. Anybody who claims to know Jesus should have joy. What does that mean, to have joy? To have joy, to, to look at life different than what the world looks at life. To understand that I'm not looking at life based on the world. I'm looking at life based on Christ. What, what does that mean, joy? Well, 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 preacher man, you, 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 you don't understand my life. You don't know what I've been going through. This life has been hard for me. How can you tell me I should have joy? Well, I don't know exactly what you've been going through. But I can tell you one thing, if you're listening to me, you should have enough joy to say thank you, Lord, because there's a lot of people did not go through what you went through. There's a lot of people did not even make it where you made it. What do you mean? Well, it's, it's not uncommon now to find babies in garbage cans. You'll hear it over the internet. You'll see it in the newspaper sometimes. It's not uncommon. What does that mean? Somebody left that baby because they did not want that baby. And you should have enough joy and say, you know what? Somebody thought enough about me. They didn't leave me. They didn't leave me to fend for myself. Why is it they didn't leave me? Because... The Lord put enough joy in their heart to say, no, no, I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. And this is what this is talking about. And God wants us to share our joy. This is the season to be joyful. But you know what I noticed this season about Christmas? 
Woo, there's a lot of Grinches. Man alive, you go to the store, you go shopping, you be out on the driving. It's a lot of Grinches out there. Disgruntled, bad. Blowing horns. Every Christmas, the byways and highways get crowded because people are going to and fro, shopping centers, different places, getting gifts. And the Grinches are upset. You and I should have joy to be able, be thankful to get out and get a gift for someone. And it does not have to be someone you love all the time. If you want Jesus to smile, buy a pair of, buy a pair of socks. And when you see a homeless man or a homeless woman standing on the corner, give them the socks. You'll be doing what Christ has asked you to do. He said, take care of the orphans and the widows. Take care of those people who can't take care of themselves. I know what somebody's thinking. Well, if they was, they'd get a job, they wouldn't be homeless, isn't that? Well, it may be true, but you and I don't know the circumstances. But there's one circumstance we all know. God, help me. And if he's helped you, you should be able to help somebody else who may not even look like they done it themselves, but they still need help. So, so at the time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hillside, hill country of Judea. She took off on a journey to see Elizabeth, who she knew. Now, they didn't live close, so we don't know how long. She didn't live around the corner. She didn't walk three blocks in the, at Elizabeth's house. She went on a journey that may have covered at least between 24 and 48 hours. But she went on that journey to get to Elizabeth to see. And when she got there, so what steps will you take to be a relative who your family can turn to doing confusion, a crisis, a need. In other words, are you that person that soon as something goes wrong in the family, they call you because they know, first of all, they know you will do all you can to help them to meet that need? I do they avoid you because they know all you want to do is talk about them. She went to see because she wanted to see for herself if this happens to Elizabeth, this can happen to me. We all should be taking steps to be that family member who people can come to and if they got a problem, we can do our best to help solve it. And so it says, where she entered Zachariah's house, home, and greeted Elizabeth. Let's contrast for a second. Zachariah got the same message that Elizabeth got, that Mary got, about what was going to happen to his wife Elizabeth. Gabriel. Six months earlier, Gabriel went and met Zachariah, the deacon, uh, the preacher. He was in the church. He was a believer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this angel stopped in and told him, you are about to be a father. And he did not do what Elizabeth done. Now, this is supposed to be a God-fearing man. If anybody, as many years as he had in believing in Jesus Christ and everything, if, if, if he, he, he should have had the faith right quick. But he doubted. He doubted what the angel told him about his own wife. He doubted it, and guess what the Lord did? He said, I tell you what, let's just sew his mouth up 
make him where he can't speak. He didn't literally sew it up, but he made sure he could not speak until after his own child was born. And here she comes to Elizabeth's house. And she hurries in there and she gets in, you know, greetings and talking and everything. And it says, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Catch that. Understand that. The Holy Spirit moves in any situation at any time. Just because you may not have it does not mean the Holy Spirit will not move. It will move. When she heard Mary's voice, who was carrying Jesus, the baby in Elizabeth's body leaped. In, in other words, you mothers know after a certain time, the babies are in you. They get to what? Kicking and moving and and you'd be like, oh, man. And some of them kick harder on the left side than the right side. And this baby leaped. The baby did not know who was in Mary's room. The spirit of Jesus leaped and let this baby know, you, you special too, buddy. Because we find out later on in life what? John the Baptist was the forerunner for Jesus. And so the baby leaped. See, I know some of us right today has got a lot of Christians. Uh, well, I ain't never experienced the Holy Spirit. I don't know if there's really a Holy Spirit or not. Well, you need to find out because what you need to do is ask, Lord, I, for some reason, now I gave myself to you, but I don't understand why I ain't never felt this Holy Spirit. Because if if He's yours, He's in you. But sometimes it call, you have to do just like we all got to do with our car. If we want that car to start, we got to put the key in it, turn the ignition before that engine starts. And sometimes what we have to do as human beings, Lord, help me. Ignite this Holy Spirit that you've given me. I believe you gave it to me. Now ignite it for me. Start this thing up so it will work in my life just like it works in somebody else's life. The reason why we don't have a lot of things is because we don't have sense enough to ask. Scripture's clear. Ask and it will be given. Not anything but the things he wants you to have. And so the baby leaped. In her womb. What is one action you can take in the upcoming week so that others feel blessed when they are around you? That's a good one right there. Are you blessed when others come around you? Are they blessed? I do when 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 people see you coming, do they go the other way? Ah, uh, when they see you, they won't even speak to you. You speak to them, they still don't speak. Those people without joy, those are people who you just have to pray for them and leave them alone. Because only God can turn that person around. You and I cannot do it. It's even, and people can tell even in your voice. If you got joy, what do you mean? You see somebody you haven't seen in a while, you say, oh, how you doing? Hi. Ain't no joy. Because if they're joyful, they're not going to respond to a joyful person with something that's not joyful. They're going to be glad that somebody else remembers me. They know me. And so... It says in 42, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Oh, look at Elizabeth. She's not no hater. 
She's not no hater. She's a lover. You know what I mean? She she wasn't getting mad because, well, my son is, a, I'm just going to have a son, but you're getting ready to have Jesus, and, and I'm mad. I don't understand. Why can't I be the one who has Jesus, and, and you have just have a regular child? No, she was joyful. She was blessed to know that what Elizabeth has been going through for the past six months now she sees that this thing, this miracle, can happen to somebody just as young as she is. Now, you know Elizabeth caught heat. Don't act like you didn't know. Elizabeth caught heat from her friends. Although she was married and although, she, matter of fact, we already found out she wasn't really able to have any children. You know what all the other sisters said? Why are you waiting so long to have a baby? You too old to have a child. That's what the naysayers said. Let's be real. It, that's what really happened when Elizabeth was found out to have her child. People talked about her because they thought she was too old. And some of them, it wasn't about being too old. They was just envious. Let's be honest. They were just envious because Elizabeth was the one being blessed and they wasn't. Why do I say that? Don't let no person steal your joy. No person. When somebody negative comes up to you, and let them be negative, but you don't let them take your joy because the Lord has blessed you. The Lord has blessed you. So, what steps can you take to imitate Mary's belief? What can you do to imitate Mary's belief? Well, we, we're not saying you got to have a, a child to prove Mary's belief, but you can start believing yourself. You can start believing yourself and look at your own life and start believing. Because if you just think about it, if it was not for Christ, you wouldn't be where you are right now. Excuse me. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have live in a big mansion. You are blessed right now. If you're young and you can walk and talk, you should be thanking God that he did not put your, put your birth in a country right now who is fighting war and kids are dying by the dozens. Because if you or I was over there, we might be dead ourselves. And them children that have, who have died had nothing to do with war. Learn to be thankful. Learn to understand. If I'm blessed to be able to get up, put some clothes on, Go here and there. There are plenty of people who can't even do that. And all of them are not old young people. Those young people listening right now, all those people I'm talking about are not old. You, you, sometimes you need to go to just take your little trip and just go to the hospital and just walk around and peep in some of the rooms, and you will find there's a lot of young people in hospitals too. Some with disease, some broken legs, some broken arms. And you will get the understanding that, hey, that could be me, but God has blessed me to, to be able to talk, to walk, to live a life where some children can't. So, But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? This is what Elizabeth said. Why am I so favored? I, I, I was just living in the joy of being able to have a child I wanted all my life. And now the Lord's going to really double my joy by letting me. Why am I favored to be the one you come to? Why am I favored? What am I saying? When our children come to us and wanting to know things. 
we should be leaping with joy inside. Why? Because they did not go ask somebody else. They did not go and ask some stranger who does not love them. They came and asked us, and we should love them enough to give them the right answer. Now, as a parent, I can guarantee you the right answer, they may not like it. But our job as a parent is to give them the right answer. If we love them enough, we give them the right answer. They may not want to hear it, but we give it to them. Because we want the best for them. The world will give them the answers that's not best for them. So, maybe we might just need to check ourselves. Why is it my son never asked me certain things? Or my daughter never asked me certain things? Maybe you need to talk to the Lord and find out why, why they're not asking you. Because if you truly love them, you should be the first one they come to to ask. And so here in 44, it says, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped, talked about John the Baptist. Then in 45, it says, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would be fulfilled in his promise to her. Her faith, Mary's faith. He said, blessed. She is blessed that she believes. Her faith. See, we, we think faith is what we see. No, faith is never seen. Faith is knowing that if I walk the path I'm supposed to walk, the things that were supposed to happen to me will happen. We, we want instant faith. That's what we really want. The world tries its best to, to show us instant faith. What do you mean? Uh, the world ain't showed me nothing. Well, if you ever went in that grocery store and got you a lottery ticket, that's the world trying to tell you instant faith. You put your numbers down on the ticket, and you may win. And then when you don't win, you get a little upset, but you'll still go back and get you another lottery ticket. That has always puzzled me, and I, I'm... I'm not saying that uh, a person don't have a right to go. It just puzzles me because I can't be paying for something and I don't get no result. Well, you know, some people hit it. Well, okay, they hit it. I'm never going to hit it because I'm never going to put my $2 in trying to hit it. Because I, I just can't do it. If I'm putting my money out, I need something back. I just don't need a ticket. It says your numbers are there, and then they don't show up in the box when they call them out on a Friday or Saturday. Uh-uh. That's not me. I'd rather take my $2 and, if I can, buy something to eat with it, a candy bar or something. At least I know I'm getting something for my money. She understood the blessing. That's what we need to understand, the blessing. All of us sitting here in the church, all of us listening out online, you are blessed. Well, I don't feel blessed. It's your fault. The Lord has blessed you. You, you should be blessed enough to have a smile on your face, to understand. If it was not for the Lord, you could be somebody else. You could be literally somebody else. That's why I always tell people all the time, as long as you live in as long as you are alive, somebody's got somebody else alive that knows you. That's why it's best that you be careful about who you really think you are. He just didn't leave you here. Well, everybody I know is gone. No, no. If you here, and I don't care how old you are, if you here, God has left somebody else here that knows you. Because sooner or later, we might make that mistake and think I can say something that nobody can prove. And that's when God will have that person show up and prove you wrong. Be 
blessed. Know that you're blessed. Look around at your life. You don't have to have the best. You got a roof over your head, you blessed. Did you sleep last night without even worrying about what was going to happen today? That's a blessing. You went to bed, slept, and no harm or danger came to you, and you slept like a baby. That's a blessing. Well, I uh, only reason that they didn't come in my house because I, I got the system, the, the system that'll keep burglars out. Let's wake up and be real. You can't keep a thief out if he re a real thief will come in. A play thief, yeah, he'll look up there and see your camera on the house and, oh, well, let me go on somewhere else. A real thief don't care about your camera and who's in there. He'll come in if that's what he is wanting to do. That's why people who know that, some of them do what they're supposed to do. Hey, I can defend my home, and I'm going to do everything I possibly can to defend my home. And they have a right. Because the scripture is clear. If a man breaks in your house at night and you defend your home, you're in the right no matter what happens to that man. And so, understand how blessed you are. He says, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months, and then she returned. Now, when Mary, when Mary went to Elizabeth, she wasn't showing. But when Mary went back home, no, buddy, that's when the town got wild. Oh, look at Mary. She done come back here pregnant. What, what's, let's get with the people and let's get ready to stone Mary. But God always has a plan. He does not do anything haphazard. And he does not tell you or me the whole plan. Let me say that again, because some people think he's supposed to tell you the whole plan. He does not tell you or me the whole plan. What does that mean? He has what? A purpose for your life. And if you just do as he has assigned you to do, you will fulfill the purpose. That's what will happen. You will fulfill the purpose. The plan is to prosper you. What do you mean? That, he said it. My plan is to, to prosper you. Now, what can you and I do to help that along? Well, young people, the first thing you can do is you can get a good education. You can do all you can to educate yourself by learning and studying. Now, everybody's not going to make A's, so let's just get that out of our minds. Everybody's not going to make B's. Some of us are going to make some C's. You heard where I put it myself at, didn't you? Some of us are going to make some C's in their life. But the key thing is to learn. Because learning will help you when God gets ready to put you in the position. But if you haven't learned nothing, then it, what you will find out, people will take away what you have. Well, how, how do you learn? You learn by studying, getting, getting the knowledge that is going to be required to you. Because when you get out here into the real world, everybody's not your friend. And everybody don't want you to be prosperous like the Lord wants you to prosper. And that's what you got to understand, young people. Get it while you can. So when God is ready, you will have it. And so when Mary returns home, he says, what are some of the ways you can provide hospitality and support to an expectant mother's? Well, James 1, 27 says this. Listen carefully what it says. 
Religion that God our Lord accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. How can you provide hospitality? How can you provide in a support for those who may not be doing as well as you? He said it right here. Religion that God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Help those children and older people who cannot help themselves. Help them. We too busy trying to help somebody who we think will help us. I don't know about you, but that's failed in my lifetime. Try to help a person, then you think when it's time for them to help you, you go and ask them, they look at you and say, oh, I can't help you, man. I can't help you. I got bills to pay. I got this to do. I got this to do. I can't help you. But he says, if you want to know me, you help those who can't help themselves. Because if you help them, I'll help you. I'll prove to you that once you help start helping them, I can help you become who you need to become. And this is what he is talking about. We see here in this model, there's two paths, two modes and two paths to faith. One mode is to believe, and one mode is to doubt. Mary believed. Zechariah, the priest, doubted. He could not believe it until it actually happened. So he doubted, and with his doubt, the Lord just decided, well, for right now, we're just going to make sure you don't talk no more. But Mary had enough faith to believe, and he wanted her to be joyful enough. Tell the world, you go back home, and you show the world what's about, about to happen. Because I'm pretty sure she had already talked to Elizabeth while she was standing there. This is going to be embarrassing when I go back home and be pregnant. And do I think I need to just stay with you because me and you understand each other. We know what's really happening. I, everybody else, when I go back home, they're not going to know what's really happening. But Elizabeth said, you don't have nothing to worry about. You've proven to me, and we've proven to each other that the Holy Spirit will take care of you. You go back and show the world that you're getting ready to have Christ. And don't you be ashamed of what the world will say, knowing what Christ will do. Are you a doubter? Or are you a believer? Do you have to see it before you believe it? Or do you act on it based upon your faith and you continue on until it comes to you? Because that's what faith is. It's acting on your faith. It's knowing that I have faith that I can do the impossible with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One of my acts of faith during my lifetime was when my daughter wanted an automobile. And I kept saying, no, baby, uh, mm. Then finally, I said, I tell you what I'll do. I'll get you a hoopty. For you young people, y'all don't know what a hoopty is. A hoopty is something that maybe costs less than about $1,000 or less. It's not a real good vehicle. It may run today, it may not run tomorrow. But I told her, I said, I tell you what I will do. If you go to school, get your college education, when you come back, I'll buy you a new car. 
she had to what? Have faith enough to believe what I said. Because if she did not have the faith, she would have said, no, daddy, let's just get me the hoopty. I'll be satisfied with the little hoopty. And she said, no. She said, when I come back, I'm, I'm going to get it, daddy. I said, okay. I said something. I meant it, but I said something really kind of hoping that she would fall for the hoopty. Truthfully, I, I did. I said it, but I said, maybe she's going to take this little car and move on. But when she said, no, I'm going to wait till I get back home from college. I said, Lord, I done opened my mouth. I got to prepare now. I got to be ready so when she comes back, she can get this car. And the Lord said, son, she's going to have it. You're going to make sure. I'm going to make sure it's going to be done. And when she come back from college, she got a brand new car. I wasn't rich, but I did have sense enough to know one thing. I better be saving between now and the next four years. So when I do buy her a car, I can be able to pay for it. So that's what I went to started to do, start putting money back. So when she got home and said, Daddy, I'm ready for my car, we can go get it. And you can ask her. We went, she drove, and she got the car she wanted. I had faith in my Lord and Savior. As a parent, she had a little faith, enough faith in me to say, my daddy ain't never told me wrong, so I'm going to believe in him and go to college and get this education. Why do I say that? As parents, when we show our children that we have faith in Jesus, Jesus will show them. He will show our children, this is the person you can count on. This is the person you can depend on. And it makes parents proud when they realize, my child didn't have to want for anything because the Lord took care of me and my child. And he will do it for all of us. See, people who have faith understand. All I have to do is say, Lord, I just need your help. You bought me from A to B. I need you to take me from B to C and from C to D and from D to E. And by the time we get to the last letter of the alphabet, I'll be gone on home. Because that's how much faith I got that you will take me to the destination I need to be. There's people here at Mount Hope that I really look up to. One of them is a lady named Sister Hart. I look up to her because in her lifetime, she's seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. But she still got her faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Still got faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What do you mean? When her spouse died, she kept on by faith. She didn't just throw her hands up and give up. She just kept on by faith. Lord, I ain't got him, but uh, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to take care of me now because he, he's not here no more. He can't help me. She kept right on trying. Then the Lord decided to take her child home, her daughter. She had faith. What do I mean she had faith? She, her daughter had a son. She could have looked and said, uh, okay. It's time for somebody else to step up. I'm, I'm up in age now. I can't be trying to raise another child. I'm up in age. And there's plenty of people in her family could have stepped up. But she didn't say that. She said, Lord, 
you want me to take him the next mile or two. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my daughter's son the next mile or two in faith, knowing that I don't have all the means necessary, but I got you. I got you to help me get my grandson down the road a little bit further. That's faith. A lot of people in her age bracket would have said, hey, somebody else come here and step up. I'm out of here. But her faith said, no, no, I got him. Now, some people say, well, you know, that's kind of old. When you get that old, won't you just want to enjoy yourself and be by yourself and go where you want to go and do what you want to do? Yes. But there's one thing I can say about Sister Harden. Her mind is as sharp as it was when she was 21 years old. Her mind is sharp. I in other words, there's no dementia nowhere in her mind where she's forgetting this and forgetting that. And there's a lot of people in her age bracket right now that have dementia and Alzheimer's. But when she had enough faith to go, keep going, God said, oh, I know what it requires, baby. You, if you keep doing it, I got it for you. And she's doing it. And she's telling her grandson and letting him know about life and, and sitting down with him and explaining some things. And I'm not there, but I'll get you one thing. I bet you she has sat down and told him, Granny ain't perfect. You won't be perfect, but you don't have to make the mistakes Granny made. I bet she done told him that. Because none of us are perfect. Don't fill your kids with perfection when they can't reach it. Help them to understand they need Christ along the way. Help them to understand they need Jesus in their life. Some of you young people who have not decided to make Jesus Christ your Savior, the day might be the day. You, you may need to say, Lord, help me to understand I need you. Help me to become a part of your family because I can see all around me you take care of your people. And young person, when you give yourself to Jesus Christ, he will take care of you. He will provide for you. He'll put shoes on your feet. That don't mean they got to be Jordan. It don't mean they got to be Jordans. He'll put clothes on your back. It don't mean they have to always be a name brand. But he'll make sure you have clothes on your back. Why do I say that? When young people, when you buy Jordans, you helping Michael Jordan. You ain't helping yourself. Yeah, you can walk around with Jordans on your feet, and that's fine. But think about this. I'll buy a decent pair of tennis shoes for 100 take that other 150 with the Jordan cost, and I'll put that in the bank, open me a bank account, and put that 150 in the bank. And at the end of the day, you'll have money in your bank account that you won't have because you're walking around with it on your feet. Understand shoes are just shoes. That's all they are. Shoes are just shoes. They're just meant to be put on and walked in and used. But if you're wise, then you understand I need a little money for the future. And I'm going to put something up. I don't have to have Jordans. I can have something else and still, hey, put something up. I don't mean no harm, but you, if you if the parents want to buy them, fine. I'm with you. I'm with you. Give them what they want sometimes. But help them make it by faith. 
just as Elizabeth made it by faith. Dear Heavenly Father, you come to us letting us know there's two paths, path of belief and unbelief. Mary believed, young, 15, 16 years old, maybe even a little less than that, but she believed that you would be everything in her life that she needed. Zachariah the priest served in your church all that time and for some reason he doubted when you were telling him he would be a father. Lord, I don't know the reason why he doubted. I don't know if it was working around the Christian people that he was working around all the time. I don't know if that caused him to doubt. But Lord, let us not be doubters. Let us be believers. Let us have faith to realize whatever circumstance we are in, you will see us through it so we can get to the next place in our life you want us to be. Help us to truly understand that. Because faith is about walking with you. And that's it. Walking with you. Help us to truly understand that, dear Heavenly Father. And we will be blessed at the end. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.